Hi everyone. Today we are going to look into how to create a circle progress bar. In our previous demos, we have seen vertical and horizontal uh, progress bars. Uh, this is going to be hopefully a fun project and we are going to learn something new. Okay. So that being said, here we are in our WPF project. It's a blank project. And uh, if you run this, we'll see we don't have anything yet. So, so the first step, it's going to be to add a reference to our solution. I mean, to our project, actually. So I'm going to go into references right click and add reference once we have our references open i'm going to search for expression dot drawing and as we type in we'll see we'll end up with two options so i'm going to grab the latest one the latest version which is 4.5 and select that and hit ok that's going to add the reference we need in our project. Okay, so let's collapse that. So we have the reference in here. Um, next thing we need to do as step two, we're going to add a namespace to our project. And let's type in XMLNS column. Let's get an ED uh, prefix this and equals so here we are going to type in http well if you notice actually intellisense is pretty smart knows what we want to do it's actually suggesting it so it's right here but uh, if it doesn't show up you can just type in http column forward slash forward slash schemas dot microsoft dot com forward slash expressions expression forward slash 2010 forward slash drawing okay all right so once that's in place uh the next thing i want to do is Split my window, my grid into two columns. So grid.column definitions and column definitions one, column definitions two. Now we have two columns. I'm going to zoom into the first column. So we're going to start with the first column. So I'm going to go with 100% uh, zoom. And let's bring that in focus here. So as we type in our code, we can see in real time the changes being made to our uh, grid. All right, so in the first column, I'm going to add an arc using the new namespace prefix we added here. So ED, and I'm going to call arc shape. Okay, so we have the arc, as you can see in here. We have a line that arcs to the right. All right, so I'm going to give it a name. Let's call this arc one. I'm going to give it a fill. That's good. Red color. And um, let's actually set the height and width. Height, let's go with 300 and width 300. Okay. All right. And let's go ahead and set some of the properties that will be uh, um, significant. 
All right, so the one of those is stretch. So I'm going to set this to none. And as you can see, some changes are already being made here. Okay, so as you type in, you can keep an eye on, on this window, see what's going on. All right, so uh, stretch set to none. I'm going to give it an arc thickness of 15. Now our arc is actually visible with color. Um, and then the next property I want to set is arc thickness unit. I want to set this to pixel. Okay. Um, so far, actually, let me set another one, and that's what that's going to be the end angle. And I'm going to set this to 200. All right, so our first arc is ready. I'm going to copy and paste this. Let's try again. Copy and paste. Let's change the name of the second one as arc2. Let's change the color to blue. And this guy, I want this to be in the second column. So let's set the grid dot column to one. And this one is going to be slightly different. And I want this arc thickness unit uh, to be percent versus pixel. And the percent kind of gives this pie shape, fills the whole thing with a pie. So in other words, if I change this to 33%, uh, as you can see, we got this pie shape. All right. So let's again go with 200 for now, which we'll later bind to somewhere else. Okay, so we have two arcs ready. Uh, the next thing I want to do, I want to add a slider that's going to control the movement of the arc. Okay, so slider. And I want to give this a height of 20. I want this to span two columns. And I want this to be vertically centered. Okay, so I have the slider somewhere here. Okay, it's right here. All right, let's run this and make sure it builds and uh, doesn't break. Make sure there's no errors. Okay, so our build succeeds. Let's run this. Okay, so we have our first arc and the second arc right here, blue. And we have a slider that works, or kind of. We have to adjust our slider because really, right now we have the default values uh, which, with 10 points. So I wanna increase this to 100. So I'm going to set the maximum value of the slider to 100. Uh, next, I want to add an event to my slider, and the event I'm looking for is value changed. Let's select that and let's go to definition. Okay, so here in, in the code behind file, in our slider value changed event handler. First, I want to grab the slider. So bar slider equals, and let's cast this sender as a slider. Okay. And next, I want to set the arc one dot end angle to 
slider dot value times 3.6 so the angle the full angle of the uh, the full angle of the uh, arc is 360 and the maximum value of the slider is 100 so to get the full value we need to multiply it by 3.6 okay let's actually test this out real quick so if I run this and move my slider back and forth, uh, the value of my first arc will change based on the slider value. Okay. I got a little adjustment here for the first slider. I want to remove that end angle because we no longer need that since we are bound to slider now. Okay. And likewise, I want to do the same thing for slider, I mean the arc two. And I'm going to add the code to do the same thing for that um, arc. So copy and paste this line of code and change the name from arc1 to arc2 and that should take care of it actually let's run this again so now if i move my slider and both uh, arcs beautifully uh, moves back and forth as the slider moves. So you can add the logic to make this a uh, progress bar. I mean, right now, actually, it's almost ready to go. It's just that based on your application, you have to add some logic to it. But uh, other than that, it's good to go. Now, if you notice, by default, we have uh, like a quarter portion of the uh, arc visible and the reason why is because there's a property called end angle and the default value for end angle is 90. If I type in 90 we'll see nothing changes but if I change this to zero it'll disappear and that's what actually we set in the background code behind the file here. So Again, the reason we have that default view visibility, it's because of the default value of the end angle. And if we change this to uh, 5, we'll see, we just have a little portion there. So um, if you don't want to see it during design time, you can set the end angle to 0, and that will... Uh, um, force it disappear. So if I now run this again, and I move my uh, slider, now it will start with zero and then all the way to 360 based on uh, what you want to do. Okay. So there you have it. That's the arc you can use as a, easily use as a pro circle progress bar with no problem. Okay, you, can, you may have to add your own logic, uh, but like we did with our earlier progress bar demo. But uh, other than that, you're good to go. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Until the next one.